24 years ago, on April 25th, a historic event took place in Beijing that shocked the world and later served as an excuse for the Chinese Communist regime to launch a brutal crackdown on hundreds of millions of people in China. The event is known as the Falun Gong Practitioners' Peaceful Petition when 10,000 Falun Gong practitioners appealed to the government for the right to freely practice their belief. So what are the real reasons for the suppression of Falun Gong? What does Falun Gong mean to China and the world? Hello everyone, welcome to the Win Kathy Show. I'm your host, Kathy Zhang. Mr. James Gorey, author of The China Crisis and an expert in China and Asia Pacific affairs with focus on economy and policies, he views the CCP's suppression of Falun Gong as a battle between darkness and the light. He believes that Falun Gong practitioners will make significant contributions to the fall of the CCP. Why does he think so? I think Mr. Gori is one of the few experts from the West who have very clear understanding of the Chinese Communist Party. That's also commented by some of our Chinese viewers. Before we dive in, please remember to register and follow our channel on Ganjing World at ganjing.com, the new free speech platform, and also hit the like button and make sure you are subscribed on our YouTube channel. Since 24 years ago, the Chinese Communist regime declared to crack down those people who follow the principles of Falun Gong and do meditation, people have always been asking this question. Why the Chinese government decided to persecute them? What's the real reason? So how does James Gorey view this question? Now, why is that? Why I mean, is that? Yeah. Why is that? There's no arms. There's no, I don't think anyone, any, any Falun Gong are, are bearing arms or having tanks or anything like that. So no, it's, look, they fear it because they know uh, at some part of themselves, they know that they're, you know, illegitimate. I mean, they, you, if you have to suppress your, your people with, with the amount of suppression, surveillance, uh, social credit scores, uh, imprisonment, torture, uh, forced organ uh, donation, I mean, all these things, you know, slave labor, they're doing horrible things to the country, to their own people, and to other people around them, you know, and so forth. So there's no, you know, it's a matter of power, and they, but, you know, darkness recognizes light for what it is. And um, the CCP is, is, is a dark force. It's a dark force in China. It's a dark force in the world. There are plenty of those. And um, Falun Gong is the, the fact that they fear the Falun Gong and, and, you know, the house Christians and the Uyghurs. And they have a lot of fears. Why? Because they, these, these things, the Falun Gong, the Christians, the others, they show um, what the Chinese Communist Party really is about. Okay, they, can't, they can't hide it. They have to, they have to reveal themselves. Gauri said that although he is not an expert in Falun Gong, from what he understood, he believes that Falun Gong is rooted in the traditional Chinese culture, reminding people to preserve the traditional values and guiding them into the future. To a large extent, um, it's, it's, a, it's a reach back to, to some Buddhists and some Taoism and uh, some of those ancient Chinese practices that go back centuries or even millennia. So it's a it's a it's a reach back. It's a retro. It's a looking back at our at the Chinese culture and bringing them forward in a new way, in a new expression. Um, if you contrast that with the CCP, they like to think of themselves as well. They are atheist materialists. But how this could pose threat to the Chinese Communist Party to the extent that it wanted to eliminate the practice? Culturally imbued values. Um, that uh, again, they think stifled China's modernization. That's what Mao's Cultural Revolution was about. He destroyed, or sought to destroy, much of uh, Confucianism and Buddhism and uh, and those those uh, traditional uh, values and and and, uh, and social role models and so forth. So the, the Chinese Communist Party is all about that. Um, <laughs> the irony is, and this is 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 in doing so by resisting. Falun Gong and, and the others in Christianity so much is that they actually, they can't help but, but, but mimic them, right? I mean, 
All right. They say they don't believe in a God, but then they want to be gods. I mean, they want to act like gods, and and so and they want to be worshipped as gods. So, in fact, as some of you may know, Falun Gong, also known as Falun Dafa, is a spiritual practice that embraces the core moral principles of truth, kindness, and forbearance. It also has five sets of、uh, slow motion exercises, including meditation. Falun Gong became very popular in China in the early 1990s due to its effective health benefits, with an estimated 70 to 100 million practitioners at its peak. The Chinese government initially supported and officially praised the practice for its health benefits and the promotion of moral values at various occasions. As the number of Falun Gong practitioners grew, so did concerns of some. In the CCP leadership, that it could pose a challenge to the regime's authority, despite being a personal spiritual practice, not a political movement. As early as 1994, the regime's security forces began investigating Falun Gong. However, the conclusions were all very positive that the practice was simply teaching people to live healthy lifestyles. And improve their moral characters. However, from 1996 to 1999, state-run media periodically ran pieces aimed at attacking and marginalizing the practice. The authority also issued a policy forbidding the publication of Falun Gong books in 1996. On April 22, 1999, the first arrests of Falun Gong practitioners took place in Tianjin. A city which is 85 miles away from Beijing, the arrest sparked concern nationwide about practitioners' freedom to practice. So over 10,000 people who came from Beijing and the surrounding cities gathered and lined up at a national appeals office near the central leadership compound of Zhongnanhai to appeal according to the Chinese law. Zhu Rongji, a top CCP official and China's premier at the time, invited four practitioners into Zhongnanhai to hear their requests, and then orchestrated the release of the people detained in Tianjin. When the news was announced to the gathered practitioners, all ten thousand peacefully left, and they even cleaned up after Chinese police officers in the area. Days later, a spokesperson for the state council declared that、uh, there would be no ban on Falun Gong. 对于这个各种气功健身活动，呃，中国的各级政府，呃，从来就没有禁止过。已经是这个今天会见了这个法轮功抗议人士的代表，请问。However, about three months later, on July twentieth, the authority. Launched a full-scale persecution of Falun Gong with a nationwide arrest. According to the Falun Gong Information Center, millions of Falun Gong practitioners have been incarcerated in prisons, re-education camps or labor camps, and other facilities. Hundreds of thousands of people have been tortured while in detention, and more than 4,000 with names were tortured to death. Gori believes that、uh, this explains the reason why the CCP is afraid of Falun Gong. You know, when a, when a people are treated as poorly、um, and as consequentially、uh, negatively as the Chinese Communist Party is treating its people long enough, then they'll lose. At some point, they'll lose the ability to control things, and people will look for answers that、um, will go beyond materialism. That go beyond Root power and oppression,、um, and and that is why they fear Falun Gong so much. But why the CCP regime waited for three months before the persecution? I think they went ahead and said to themselves, "Okay, look at how many people there are.、Um, so this is a threat.、Um, they're not threatening us militarily, but they're threatening us in a way that the Tiananmen Square threatened people, right?" <laughs> So I think they they said, look, let's not do what we did in Tiananmen Square and have another kind of world event happen here. Let's let's pull back, let's take names, let's find out who people are,、uh, and let's strike、uh, at a time of our own choosing.
uh, and see if we can snuff this out. I think that was probably a part of the thinking there, so that they avoid that kind of global condemnation, right, that Tiananmen Square uh, engendered. So uh, I think the CCP just had some patience. Let's find out who these people are, uh, because they originally supported them, I think, in the early 90s. The April 25th peaceful petition, as Gori described, is the CCP's attempt to justify its persecution by doing what any authoritarian, totalitarian, or illegitimate regime would do, which is to create an imaginary enemy or fictitious event and portray it as siege or a rebellion or a riot. The CCP regime planned to destroy and eliminate Falun Gong in three months. The CCP is fighting against an enemy it cannot see and ultimately cannot defeat. All right. Again, um, I speak in Manichaean terms here, but it's a force of darkness, and darkness can't stand the light. Light destroys darkness. Now, it may take some time, um, but it happens. And why is that? The CCP looks great, looks strong. They've got a lot of weaknesses. And the bigger their weakness, the bigger their fear. That's how I look at it. What do you think the biggest weakness that um, the CCP, uh, when they're facing Falun Gong? The more they persecute him, the, be the bigger Falun Gong gets. Gori also believed that uh, one of the fundamental reasons of the persecution lies in the very different natures of Falun Gong and the CCP, and that will ultimately determine the outcome. The precepts of, of Falun Gong are I believe, truthfulness, compassion, and, and forbearance. Um, none of those things are, are attributes of the CCP. So, you know, how it, how it falls, how it comes about, you know, life is, life is, is, is you know, unpredictable at times. Um, how things come about well, may surprise us, okay? But um, it may not be today, may not be tomorrow, but um, the seeds of its own destruction are within it already. And... Um, because they, truth is, is something they avoid at all costs. I mean, think about how a party member stays in power by, by you know, backstabbing his comrades, right, when, when, it, when it works for him. So there's that kind of thug mentality, of mafioso, back and forth. Um, and so that happens. It, all it takes really is for the right set of circumstances, the right set of of people to cheat and to lie and to and to betray and and you have a, a divided party and so forth. So it's it, it like I said, I don't think it'll happen today. It may not happen tomorrow, but it'll happen. And uh, people will see something else. People will look elsewhere for an alternative when the party makes life so horrible for so long. Um, people look for an alternative. Look how the Soviet Union fell. Who knew? Who could have, who could have predicted that? So. Um, We'll see. Even though the persecution lasted for 24 years and is still going on, many people in China hold on to the practice and their belief in truth, kindness, and forbearance. In the meanwhile, Falun Gong has been gaining popularity in over 100 countries around the world. So how to see such scenario? You know, to, to use a Christian phrase, man does not live by bread alone. Okay, so. Uh, Marxism is a materialist system, and it, it's a value-based system on materialism, okay? Um, truth is, isn't in there. It's, it's all materialist, and that's, um, that isn't enough for people. In a sense, the, the more pressure a regime puts on its people, the more it produces powerful uh, counterforces. That's just the way it works. It works with literature. It works with religion. It works with a, a movement like Falun Gong. Falun Gong is, will be the same. Wherever you offer someone more, a better way of looking at life, uh, a truer way of looking at life. And so um, things that are built on lies, they may last for a long time, but they don't last forever. Gori believes that Falun Gong is a positive force for China. I think Falun Gong could be a very, very positive development, particularly in China first. You know, it sprang up there because it was needed there. It's, you know, that's a philosophical assertion, but I think it, I think it, it, it stands on its own. I view it kind of as a, as a effort to regain to your past, to regain your culture, to regain the, the values that have been stripped from Chinese society 
by and large, by the Communist Party. How do you think the rest of the world, uh, did they see what you see? As far as Falun Gong being a force for good in China, I don't think there's that level of awareness to be, that, that's my best assessment, to be honest. Um, that said, um, one half of the equation is getting much more attention. That is, people now see China for what it is. Um, a lot of people do. In the media, in, in, in the entertainment world, the news world, the academic world, we're seeing just how deep their reach has, has become. And so there's a lot more uh, awareness that uh, people have that say, hey, hey, this is not good that China's become so powerful. So um, they, I don't think the second half of, the, of that equation uh, and Falun Gong is a way to undermine it. I don't think that is that awareness level is very high at this point, to be honest with you. I, I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong, but uh, I don't think it is. Um, and that that's for a lot of reasons. You know, Falun Gong is kind of a, a it is a culturally um, not exclusive by any means, but it's it's more of a kind of a, an exotic, uh, un kind of known quantity than say traditional religions might be. Everyone understands the Uyghurs are Islamic and Turkic, you know, and um, everyone understands that, that the house churches in, in, in China are, are basically Protestant Christian. Falun Gong is, is a little more amorphous, I think, in more people's minds and not quite clear on what it is. Um, um, and so that's part of it. But remember, it's, it's, not, it's not the important. The important thing isn't that Falun Gong gets, gets um, particularly noticed around the world as much as what it does internally in China. Uh, now, those two may be related, um, but uh, I, I think the, the thrust is that Falun Gong shows the Chinese people there's a better way. We don't have to live under this thuggery. Um, and there's a better way to conduct ourselves and to conduct our, our society. So, uh, and it, you know, it, it, is, it does go back to, to, the, to you know, some values of Buddhism and Confucianism, Taoism, some that, that China, the Chinese people revered for, for, for millennia. Centuries, at least. So, so how James Gorey got to know about Falun Gong? He explained that after he wrote the book The China Crisis in 2013, the Epoch Times did a book review, and from there he got the opportunity to talk to more people who have first-hand experience and understanding of the practice. Just by exposure and by conversations and by reading about it, that's how I came to know it. It was I knew about it before. But it was a much more of a, yeah, I've heard of that. I'd say in China, I don't know what it is. You know, so, so the more you get involved with, with, with people and the more you kind of do a little bit of research and, and, and pay attention, the more you learn. And so that's what I've done. It has a very attractive attribute to it. You know, and, and, it's, and quite frankly, the exercises that people do, I think there's like four or five or six of them, not very many. There's a simplistic purity to it, I think, that is attractive and that is, uh, is beautiful. It's a lot, there's a lot of beauty there. Gory believes that Americans of Chinese descent, especially those who used to live under the Chinese Communist regime, can play a big role in the United States today. I would suggest that the folks in the China diaspora, I would say Falun Gong, or even if you're not in Falun Gong, but, but particularly if you are, if your truth is, is, a, is a primary value, then it's, it's, an, it's your job, it's your duty to speak the truth. Uh, in other words, so if you're outside of China living a great life, that's wonderful, but you've got to use that to speak the truth. I think the truth is, is demands to be heard, and no one could say it better than the Chinese about the Chinese Communist Party. So they need to be more public. They need to be marching in the streets. No CCP in the USA. But you, need to, you need to stand up and be vocal and be heard because you won't be heard in China. You'll be shut down in China. So you have a right to say that here still. So now is the time to say it while well, you still can. I also asked James Gorey if he has the opportunity to talk to the people in China, what he would like to say. Don't forget who you are, um, where you come from. And it, it, it's not Marxism. Marxism is not your identity. I don't care what Xi Jinping says, talks about Marxism with uh, Chinese characteristics. That just means killing more people. So I tell the Chinese people, 
Look back to where you, where you, who you are. Remember who you are. You are, uh, you're much more than, than Marxism and social credit scores. Okay. You're much more than units of production. You're human beings with a divine spark and you have every right to live on this earth um, and to live in a China that is prosperous, that is peaceful. And um, so don't let the Communist Party destroy your souls. Indeed. Since I have my Chinese radio show broadcasting to China via shortwave on Sound of Hope radio network, which signal covers about 70% of the land of China, many Chinese people will probably hear what James Gorey has to say. So what do you think of his message? Please share with us in the comments. As Gori told me, he believes that the understanding of Falun Gong in the world has not yet come to what it should be and will be, but I do hope this show with his understanding gives you a bit more insights or provoke your more interest. It's really worth looking into Falun Gong, both from the human rights angle and the personal improvement and the spiritual practice point of view. That's it for today's show. Thank you for watching and see you next time.